Gratitude is a killer of destiny. When you are thankful, you have your thankful. An atmosphere of joyfulness is the breeding ground for miracles. I came as your prophet to announce to you by the authority of God on my life that this year will not end until your season changes. Our topic is battle for your home. Our conviction is that every home is worth fighting for. Don't just sit back and let the devil run roughshod over your spouse or take over your family space. Last Sunday we saw in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, Paul the apostle instructing you and I saying, neither give place to the devil. You don't want the devil to have your partner or your children, do you? No. You want to tell the devil to take his hands off your husband, off your wife, off your children in the name of Jesus Christ. If you give the devil a foothold, he'll go a mile. If you invite him for dinner, he comes with his pajamas. He wants to sleep. Many people don't understand how devastating the devil can be. If you remove D from his name, he becomes evil. You don't mess with him. So you can't afford to sit back and allow things to be happening in your home and you just put your hand and say, I hope it will change. Hope is not a strategy. Things don't change by hoping. Things change by doing the right stuff. And once again, I commend you to God and to the beautiful teachings we've done. I encourage you to get them. This morning, I just want to drop four simple things in your heart that will help you lead a happy home. Number one, you need to learn to live with contentment. Live with contentment. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, he says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 7 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. All of us came empty and naked. We can't take anything away. So we need to be contained. Now, how does that relate to marriage? Gratitude is the seed for more. Ingratitude is the seed for bankruptcy, lack, and discord. Learn to be grateful to your spouse, regardless of how little you think what they did is. Be thankful. Like I always say, when you are thankful, you have your tank full. When you are thankful, that becomes a moral booster for the person to do more. But when you go around trivializing, commonizing, what your partner has done for you, that's ingratitude on display and that's the seed for poverty, for discord, for lack. In fact, we must learn to thank God first for the little achievements he's given us the ability to achieve instead of sulking over the things that we don't have. You know, I always challenge you in church. Somebody's saying, I don't have children. Thank God that you have a wife. I don't have children. Thank God you have a husband. Oh, I'm not married. Thank God you are marriable. Oh, yeah? Because some people are not even thinking about marriage because they've lost their mind. Oh, I don't have a job. Thank God at least you are a graduate. Come on, am I talking to the right crowd this morning? Gratitude is the seed for more. Ingratitude shuts doors of opportunity. So when your spouse does anything for you. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. Learn to be grateful. And let me tell you, gratitude is a display. Are you following what I'm saying? Gratitude is an attitude that creates a fortitude in many a vicissitude. Do you get that? Yes. An attitude of gratitude creates fortitude. 
creates a defense mechanism against satanic onslaughts and attacks. So, if you want to have a successful home and a happy home, you must learn to be grateful. I always tell people, thank God for dirty dishes. They have a tale to tell. At least there was once food and eat. But you see, this generation is an unthankful and ungrateful generation. You're like, what have you done for me, sir? Oh, really? It's a, it's a generation that is an entitled generation. A generation that has what I call an entitlement mentality. An entitlement mentality is a mentality that makes people think that somebody owes them something. So your wife should be worshipping you because you married her. Over. <laughs> no, because you married her. Uh, no other person can marry her. No, your husband should hang himself. Because he married a wife. Or she go and break the bank because he want to feed your impulsive and excessive and insatiable desires. Miss Universe. <laughs> and you and I know that these are the things that create tension in homes. Then we start making comparison. Look at what that man did for the wife. Look at what that woman. You see, that woman, when she comes, she lays down as your Lord she pleases. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's easy for us to make comparison. You see how that woman was talking to the husband. Find out how the husband treats her. You women, you compare. That one just bought SUV for the wife. And you say you are a man. You can even buy me keke na pep. Why did the man buy her an SUV? And why is your husband not doing the same for you? The point is, comparison is foolishness. Hope you know that. It's just stupid. Because you see, until you live with people, you really can't tell the details, the nitty gritties that run their home. Come on. All right, so, one of the things you must learn is to live with contentment. You know, as a pastor, I've learned this so much. And it has helped me. When our church was very young, or younger than this, and smaller, the natural inclination for me was to get sad when coming to church, not finding so many people, until God knocked my head, I didn't mean literally, one day with this truth. He said, Jeff, who do you think you are? He says, thank me for the few people you see. They had a choice of going somewhere else. That if they came to listen to you, you should be grateful because they could have gone some other places. That like, boom, hit me hard. From that day, I made up in my mind, regardless of who didn't come, I celebrate everyone who came. That's why if you watch, if you watch, if you've been in this church for a while, I always appreciate everyone who comes before I start to preach. Did you notice it? It's an attitude I've cultivated because you could have been somewhere else. And that's the truth. And I, I'm not sure anybody put chain on your neck and dragged you here. Even if somebody forced you, you also made the choice to come. You could have said, I know they go. Now, 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 quarter. <laughs> now, by force. You know what I was saying in Nigeria? Is it by force? You came. So I, I'm grateful. Now, now, and I don't mean that lightly. Now, I also say this to say that for me, graduated to the area of gifts. With due respect and all humility, I'm a very thankful person. I always tell my team, and people around me. Now you see, nobody owes you anything. If anybody gives you anything, be grateful because they don't owe you nothing. That's the truth. Now let's come back to marriage. Your husband don't owe you nothing. You see, he, he married me. No, you married him also. It was a mutual agreement. He didn't kidnap you unless he did. Then we can call the police on him. Because some of us act like though somebody owes us stuff. So the guy is struggling to meet your needs. Hey, the recipe for unhappiness is trying to please people all the time. You'll be frustrated. And the problem is that many of us are always raising the bar. You know, there's a law we call the law of diminishing return. It means you don't return to whatever you have done. You know, I was talking to the singles here on Wednesday. See, if you used money to get a girl, you gave her 50K, 20K, 30K. Another guy will use 100K to collect the girl. Is it true? Now you're like, hey, for all the things I've done for you, 20K, 30K, this and this. Ah, she will say 20, 30, 100, 100, 150. It's bigger than your own. 
So you don't have a right to be angry. Now, when you see her, so that's what the guy is giving her. That's why she's not listening. Okay, I'm going to give you 200K. She says, okay, I'll stay with you now. 200, 200. So 200K. And when that guy shows up and says, I'll give you a million now. Ah! Million. Six zeros. And he tells you, say, oh boy, you did try, but uh, with the way things day now. <laughs> now the guy is frustrated. You know why you are frustrated? Because somebody always has something more to offer. Now for you, the women, I've told you, if you use sex to collect him, another person will use sex. If you use sex to get him, somebody will use sex to collect him. It's the truth. So, so I'm talking to the singles now. So, so what do you do? Every human being has his own USP, unique selling proposition. Don't mind me, it's a, it's a marketing term. You know, but... I'm just saying that you have your own competitive advantage. That thing that makes you you, that is unique and peculiar to you, that cannot be duplicated, that's what sustains a relationship. Because all this why you are flaunting all your physiognomy. What is it? No, what is it? You say sex. Somebody can do it better than you. Look straight now. Look straight. I know you are blushing. Yeah, he's talking about sex in church. That's not unholy. It's holy. It's holy. Stop pretending, you. Look. <laughs> yes, my point. That's why we, we have problems. So if you think you're feeling cool with yourself, that you are dazzling out with money, I'm not, naira. Somebody's coming with pounds telling. Oh boy. Queen head. They change, they change 100. Oh, fool everywhere. <laughs> So here's the deal. Are you not going to be frustrated? Now, if it is beauty on your wedding day, I guarantee you, your, your maid of honor will find past your wife. Go say, ah! Pull the gown, give her, give her. <laughs> Pull the gown, give her. This is the one I want to marry. If it is money, somebody will be richer than your husband. Am I making sense here? Somebody will always be richer. Is it truth? So why are you killing yourself? My point is be grateful. Look up your neighbor, say be grateful. Be grateful. That's the point. Be, be, learn to live with contentment. All this Oloju Kokoro, you know, this Okmolo eyes we have, that you keep, you keep, I'm not asking us not to be ambitious. I'm saying be contented. Live with contentment. Thank God for what he has done. Instead of sulking and crying and killing yourself over what you don't have. Did you catch that point? God sent me to tell you that in this new month, your dream is coming alive. Your dream is about to manifest. If you are a dreamer, shout amen! At Miracle Assembly, everything we do is geared towards liberating people for quality living. We celebrate the word and the works of our Lord Jesus Christ. So come join Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyanua, as well as the happy family of Miracle Assembly at our international headquarters at 147 Upper Owina Road by Ewotubu Police Station off Ago Street via Ekenwa Road, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria for our three power pack services every Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 9.15 a.m. and 11 a.m. and also on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. prompt for our School of the Word. It's always a wonderful experience in God's presence. See you there. Number two point is let God be God. Let God be God. You know, sometimes we try to play God and it's, it's arrogance in his highest proportion. We try to straighten people out. You know, all through this series, you've heard me say this. For the guys, they say, well, I'm going to. It's either you bend or you break. Excuse me. If you have a broken wife, it's your wife that is broken. And I don't think anybody wants to be comfortable with a broken object. Do you want to drink with a broken cup? Eat with a broken plate? Come on. For you ladies, you want to train your husband and love your children. Error. You can't train your husband and love your children. Train your children and love your husband. You are not his mother. Your husband didn't marry another mother. Say, I will fix him. I will straighten him out. They're not trained away. 
Are you his mother? Who gave you that position to continue from where the mother stopped? Since your man not train you, I don't matter you. I will fix you. I will straighten you out. That's not your job. My point is that's God's job. Let God be God. First Corinthians eleven three. Look at it. First Corinthians eleven three says, "But I would have you know, please know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is who." We call this the principle of headship. Or principle of hierarchy. This, this phenomenon. Now what that means is this. If a man is telling, I'm your head, I'm your head, I'm your head. So I can do whatever I want to do. I'm a despot, I'm a dictator, I can do. Stay here. Woman, relax. You can't force a change on your husband. You can't force him to change. No. He also has a head. That's what the Bible is saying. So what should you do? That was our message last Sunday. Go to his head. Who is his head? Christ. Pray. That's the problem with many of us. Anyway, that's my message last Sunday. You need to get it to understand that. You think I will fix him. No. Go to the one who can fix him. It's an exercise in futility to say, it's either I, I fix him or everything will scatter. You scatter your home. You the guys, I'll fix her. You know, there's this mentality that we have in Africa that say, because I paid bright price, so we have this terminology like, I own you. You are my own. Not in a positive light. You say you own your wife like you own a piece of furniture. It's derogatory. Like you own a car because you paid bright price. You don't own anybody. It's God that owns all of us, right? We belong to God. So here's the point. If your wife is proving stubborn or she's not being fixed, go to God. My point is you can't force change on people. You can't. What you get when you try to force change on people is rebellion. Madam, since you've been complaining about that, your husband's behavior, has he changed? You know why he has not changed? Because when you try to force change, what comes out is rebellion. You've been trying to fix your wife. What happens is that she stands up to you now. Yeah. She couldn't do that before, but now you've given her the guts, the bravado, as it were, to stand up to you. Because that's what you get. See, rules without relationship equals rebellion. If you are a rule master... Thou shalt do this. Thou shalt not do this. You know, some guys have ten commandments to run their homes. Thou must understand the sound of the horn. When I honk my horn at the street junction, thou must run to the gate and stand. <laughs> and once I enter the house, thou must prostrate and say, His majesty, welcome. And thou must rush to get my water in the bathroom as if the shower is not flowing. Thou must fix my meal very hot. Ten minutes before, no. Ten minutes after, too late. The appropriate time. Now you think I'm being, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being funny. It will shock you to see how weird some men are. See, I'm speaking from revelation, from experience as a pastor. I've seen some rules some men give to their wife. I'm like, excuse me, who do you think you are? No, really and truly, how much did you pay? 24 naira. Take, keep the change. I dash you. It's a smart guy. It's in the spirit. He collected it. And he's not married. I've just paid your bride price. Tired of us. But somebody say, ah, in our family, I want to 200 k I'm sorry, I don't have 200 k to pay your bride price. <laughs> At least I can pay that one. My point is, People only change when they want to or when they have to. You can't force it. Go, you see, this same attitude is what some pastors have. Uh, I will change you. Excuse me, that's a recipe for disappointment. You can't change anybody. It's the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that changes people. True or false? It will be arrogance of me to say that I'm changing you. How? Can I change an ant? So how do you think you can change a human being? That's why we employ the resources of the spirit, which is the word and the spirit. That's our mission. When we expose you to the spirit and the word, working together, that helps us give you quality living. That's our vision and mission. So when somebody is in church and they are misbehaving, I don't bother because that's not my job. I just go to my closet. As long as I keep exposing you to the Holy Spirit and to his word, Change is on the way. Hallelujah. After a while, you'll be straightened up. 
And you're like, hey, so what happened? That's God's job. It will be foolhardy for me to think I want to fix you. I want to change you. I can't even change an ant. So it's even arrogance and pride for a preacher to think he's changing people. No, you can't. That's why we are glo- That's why we give glory to God when people change under our ministry. Because we know this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. amen. And the church is like a hospital. People are responding to treatment. Some others are not responding. So we keep administering and changing the drugs. <laughs> Until they respond. No, but that's it. So in case you are looking at me and say, hey, pastor, that's your member. She's notorious. That member of your church is a useless man. You're not hurting me. I agree he's useless. That's why he's a member. Because the Holy Spirit is still working on him. But you see, when the Lord is true with him, even you attacking him will be disappointed. That's why as pastors, we have a large heart. We accommodate people. We love on people. Because that's the work of the Holy Ghost. All of us are a work in progress. But is anybody perfect here? No. So I mean, anyway, that's for those in leadership. So now back to marriage. People only change when they want to. Like I said, you chose to be here, not because somebody forced you to be here. You could have said, I won't come to church. And nothing will happen. You'll be cheating yourself though. But see, my point is, when you want to, because you see the benefit of church attendance to your life, you participate. It's like tithing. When you know the benefit of tithing to your destiny, you tithe. If you don't tithe, wait for the devourer. Period. I don't have a problem with that. The devourer is going to come collect it and it doesn't take 10%, you know. It takes more than that. That's the truth. But our job is to let God be... You pray for somebody, they don't get healed, you are feeling deflated. Are you the healer? Are you the healer? Really and truly, that's pride for the preacher. Let God be God. Madam, if you allow God to fix your husband, sir, if you let God be God in your home, you will have peace. Are you still here? See, for us who have children, eh? and anybody who has children will know that this thing I'm saying is the truth. Can you straighten your children? It's God. You know, it, it hurts me when I hear people attack parents whose children didn't turn out right. Oh, especially when people who are attacking these parents are single people who have never been married or have children. They're not, they're not trained, they're picking where. Who is talking? A single girl. Wait until you marry and have children and raise your children. I have a friend in the UK. You know, she says to me, she says, Pastor Jeff, I can't tell, I can't thank God enough as to how my daughters turn out to be decent girls. Now, I use the UK particularly because of the level of liberty in the UK as it were. She says, I, I can't, if, well, it's, it's even worse in America. She says, and I know the daughters, decent girls, doing extremely well. I knew them when they were young, they're in their 20s now. Decent girls having powerful, they work in the city, high organization, up there. I like she, the mother keeps telling me you see now the point she's making is if i say i'm the one that trained them is a lie by 18 they have a right i hope you know that some of themselves in america at 13 14 they walk out of the house so it's god so it is in africa so if your children turns out well thank god ma'am don't criticize the other one whose children are not doing well am i making sense yeah and say, uh, yeah, yeah, my no reason picking well. It's God. You know what I've learned in life as a pastor? Be careful how you criticize people. You know, when God steps into somebody's life, he can do a 360 degree turn. In fact, a 180 degree turn. You understand what I'm saying? As a pastor, I've seen God do miracles, eh? All those you think will not rise. That's why I have confidence that for every one of you here, this year will not end until God makes you a testimony to your family. Those of you believing God for marriage, watch it. It may take time, but God will give you a husband, more than seven husbands. You see what happens. You know, people are very quick to judge people. Hey, I have children, you don't have children. Ah, no be fair, bon piquino. Your child may come later. Ask Hannah. Penina had children. Her entire story was told in one chapter. Samuel came later. One chapter didn't contain his story. Two chapters didn't contain his story. One book didn't contain his story. He became first and second Samuel. I prophesy to you. 
this year your testimony will make news you can graduate five years ago and not have job five years after somebody who graduated five years after we have a job and be your boss does it not happen be careful how you criticize people be careful hey i'm married you are not married and so and so well let's come back to our context you can straighten out your wife your, or your husband let god be god you know what that does for you it gives you peace it just means you acknowledge the fact that there's a greater head above all of us so when i report you to the head the head knows how to do it Oga, she's your daughter sir is your son who are you talking to god fix your son fix your daughter and you think the holy ghost does not have what it takes to fix us he does but many of us are trying to bring out our own spanners, our own nuts and bolts. And we fix you. And you break the thing. When you break it, you have a precious metal or precious element in your hand that you have broken. Fix it. If God will not say, fix it. Don't mess with God's product. We are all God's product. Say amen. God sent me to tell you that in this new month, your dream is coming alive. Your dream is about to manifest. If you are a dreamer, shout amen! At Miracle Assembly, everything we do is geared towards liberating people for quality living. We celebrate the word and the works of our Lord Jesus Christ. So come join Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyanua, as well as the happy family of Miracle Assembly at our international headquarters at 147 Upper Owina Road by a Waterboo Police Station off Ago Street via Ekenwa Road, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria for our three power pack services every Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 9.15 a.m. and 11 a.m. and also on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. prompt for our School of the Word. It's always a wonderful experience in God's presence. See you there.